uh, Mr. Cuellar, Cuellar uh, has expressed an interest in the work of this subcommittee on the census and ensuring an accurate count. And we really, really believe in that and be supportive of it, especially in the minority and Hispanic communities. And his perspectives on these issues will help the subcommittee in its oversight role. So welcome to the uh, census um, uh, subcommittee. The committee um, will first consider H.R. 1506, a bill to facilitate donations to the National Archives of certain documents related to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The bill was introduced by Representative Slaughter and Burton. A similar bill, H.R. 669, passed the House by voice vote last year. The Tully Archives is a collection of FDR-related papers and other items that were in the possession of President Roosevelt's personal secretary, <clears throat> Grace Tully. The private owner of the collection would like to donate it to the FDR library, but the National Archives asserted a claim to a portion of the collection. The bill would clear the title to the papers and permit their donation to the archives. H.R. 1506 waives the government's claim to the records in order to allow the collection to be gifted to the FDR library. The Tully Archive represents an important part of American history. This bill ensures that this collection will properly pre preserved and made publicly available from the FDR library, which is administered by the National Archives. The acting archivist of the United States, Adrian Thomas, sent a letter to the committee expressing her strong support for this bill. In a letter, Mrs. Thomas wrote, it is very important uh, for future historians that might want to study these papers for the Tully archives to be kept intact and made fully accessible to the American people in the public government archives. I urge members to support this bill, and I yield to the ranking member of this committee for any comments that he might have at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I join with you in recognition that we need to move this uh, legislation. For too long, these documents have been outside the National Archives, and the and Grace Tully's uh, records uh, over her decades serving Franklin Roosevelt uh, as a secretarial staff and then as, her, as his personal secretary have been unavailable to the United States government. I do recognize that after the death of her niece, that personal collection was bought by the Sun-Times Media, who paid $8 million in 2001. My understanding is that uh, in its final form, it will recognize that amount as the amount being gifted. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I reserve the right to continue watching this legislation as it goes through since we are not having lengthy hearings on it, uh, but do recognize that, one, we need to secure the assets. Two, the Sun-Times media does appear to have a very valid uh, record of its payment and the United States government appears to have a fairly weak claim to deny uh, the deductibility of this gift and assert that, in fact, it has always been owned by the United States government. That claim does not appear to have been done in, timely, in a timely fashion. And for that reason, I join with the chairman moving this legislation at this time, and we'll continue to look as the process continues. And I yield back and thank the chairman. Thank you very much. Um Mr. Gentleman Chairman. California, thank you. Uh, I'd like to yield five minutes to the gentleman from um, Missouri, Congressman Clay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to you and Ranking Member Towns and member, uh, Ranking Member Issa and members of the committee. I stand in support of passage of H.R. 1506. This bill aims to waive government claims to a collection of historic documents relating to President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, as Chairman of the Information Policy Census and National Archives Subcommittee, I am tasked with helping to ensure our nation's records is accessible to the public at large. History is the treasure by which our great nation thrives and the Grace Tully Collection will add tremendous richness to our National Archives. Uh, I urge you to waive the claim for which NARA filed in 2004 allowing the owner of this vital collection to donate these records to the Franklin D. Roosevelt Presidential Library. This gift will be to the benefit of the American people. And I urge a, a, a vote 
on moving this bill out of the committee and onto the House floor. I yield back. Thank you very much. Anyone seeking recognition on this side? Uh, Congresswoman Norton, recognized for five minutes. Um, thank you very much, and I appreciate the way this, this uh, bill is being, being uh, moved forward, uh, whatever are the technical uh, issues involved, and we heard them explain. Uh, I believe they are uh, far overcome by the overwhelming public interest, particularly uh, at this fortuitous moment um, when, uh, as a student of uh, the New Deal, and I've begun to read it again, uh, we might be even more interested in these papers uh, than usual. Uh, I note in my own readings that we're going through some of the same travails that Franklin Delano Roosevelt went through by 1937 after having uh, been greeted as the savior of the economy. They were calling it the Roosevelt Depression uh, because unemployment had not uh, uh, subsided enough. I mean, he had brought it down from 25 percent to 15 percent, but of course, uh, that was obviously not enough for large numbers who were unemployed. Uh, and if the fact be told, uh, we did not get out of the Great Depression until the nation began to spend large amounts of money uh, because of World War II, when everybody went back to work and we virtually drafted women, although they came very willingly uh, to join the workforce as so many uh, men were called uh, abroad in the draft. I am very curious uh, as to see, to see whether or not these papers tell us anything we don't already know or, for that matter, need to learn from history. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Any other members seeking recognition? Uh, if no other members wish to speak, I now call up H.R. 1506. H.R. 1506, a bill to provide that claims of the United States to certain documents relating to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I ask unanimous consent that the bill be considered as read and open for amendments at any point. Without objection, so ordered. Are there any amendments? Chairman, I'd move the previous question. Right here, no amendments. I now move, of course, the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform reports H.R. 1506 to the House with the recommendation that the bill do pass. The question is on favorably reporting H.R. 1506 to the House. Of course, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. In the opinion of the Chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to, and H.R. 1506 is ordered reported. The naming of s certain postal offices. The, the next order of business will be resolutions and commission and postal name and bill. Uh, these resolutions and bills include H. Res 159 introduced by Representative Paul Hodes of New Hampshire. This measure honors the New Hampshire State Senate for becoming the first statewide legislative body with a majority of the women in the United States. I have a manager's amendment at the desk updating this bill and I ask unanimous consent that it be adopted and considered as the base text. Without objection, so ordered. H. Res. 727 introduced by Representative Steve Israel of New York expresses support for the goals and ideals of National Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. H. Res. 736 introduced by Representative Todd Platts of Pennsylvania honors President Lincoln's Gettysburg Address on Dedication Day, November the 19th, 2009. H. Res. 742, introduced by Representative Jim Marshall of Georgia, congratulates the Warner Robins Little League softball team from Warner Robins, Georgia, on winning the 2009 Little League, Little, uh, League, Little League Softball World Series. H. Res. 743, introduced by Representative Christopher Murphy of Connecticut, honors the life of Frank McCourt for his many contributions to the American literature, education, and culture. H. Res. 780, introduced by Representative Bob Filner of California, recognizes the celebration of Filipino American History Month. H. Res. 798, introduced by Representative Jim McDermott of Washington, conveys the best wishes of the House of Representatives to those celebrating Diwali. Diwali. Uh, H.R. 1849, introduced by Representative Emanuel Cleaver 
of Missouri designates the Liberty Memorial at the National World War I Museum in Kansas City, Missouri, as a National World War I Memorial and established the World War I Centennial Commission to ensure a suitable observance of the centennial of World War I. I have a manager's amendment at the desk updating this bill, and I ask unanimous consent that it be adopted and considered as the base text without objection, so ordered. H.R. 3250, introduced by Representative Timothy Bishop of New York, designates the facility of the United States Postal Service located in 1210 West Main Street, Riverhead, New York, as the private first class Garfield M. Langhorn Post Office Building. H.R. 3539, introduced by Representative Albio Cyrus of New Jersey, designates the facility of the United States Postal Service located at 427 Harrison Avenue in Harrison, New Jersey, as the Patricia D. McGinty uh, uh, Jewel Post Office Building. H.R. 3634, introduced by Representative Marin Berry of Arkansas, designates the facility of the United States Postal Service located at 109 Main Street in Swifton, Ar <coughs> excuse me, Fifton, Swifton Arkansas, as the George Kell Post Office. H.R. 3667, introduced by Representative and under Crenshaw of Florida, designates the facility of the United States Postal Service located at uh, Spring Street in White Springs, Florida, as the Clyde M. Hill House Post Office building. And H.R. 3767, introduced by Representative Bob Bishop of Utah, designate the facility of the United States Postal Service located at 170 North Main Street in Smithville, Utah, as the W. Hazen Hilliard Post Office Building. H.R. 3788, introduced by Representative Steve Latourette uh, of Ohio, designates the facility of the United States Postal Service located at 3900 Darrow Road in Stow, Ohio, as the uh, Corporal Joseph A. Tom C. Post Office Building. S-748, introduced by Senator Barbara Box of California, redesignates the facility of the United States Postal Service located at Logan Avenue in San Diego, California, as the Cesar E. Chavez Post Office. Uh, Senate 1211, introduced by Senator Charles Schumer of New York, designates the facility of the United States Postal Service located at 60 School Street, Orchard Park, New York, as the Jack F. Kemp Post Office Building. Having satisfied the committee's criteria, each of these measures are worthy of support, and I therefore urge their adoption. Does the ranking member have any comments on these bills? Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'd ask unanimous consent that we insert in the record in the appropriate place for H.R. 1849, a letter from the American Legion's National Ch uh, Commander, Clarence E. Hill. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, reviewed uh, all of these postal namings and resolutions and find they meet the requirements of the committee and would move their adoption. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you very much. Any other members seeking recognition? I ask unanimous consent that these resolutions and bills be considered in block and read and open to amendment at any time. I ask unanimous consent that the measures previously described be reported favorably by the committee. Without objections, so ordered. Anybody seek anything else? Nope. Committee is now adjourned.